and back in some review. That's fantastic. This is lesson 7.4. Gonna talk about a whole bunch of stuff here. Main thing is this thing called the power series. We'll connect it to the geometric power series. Hmm. And then guess what? We're gonna do some integration or do some differentiation using these power series. So if you're curious what a power series really is, let me show you. It's a series with variable terms like this. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and all that. See how the variables are different powers? And that's why we call this a power series. Note that this particular power series is also a geometric one. Why do we call it a geometric power series? Hope you can see that to get from one term to the next, you multiply by a common ratio of x. So if it converges, my question to you is, what must be true about the variable x? So recall for a geometric series, the ratio, remember the r value, has to be less than 1. And in this example, in this example, r just happens to be x. So the absolute value of x has to be less than 1 for it to converge. <clears throat> now, for these x values, if I were to add them to infinity, that means forever, do you remember how to calculate the sum of a geometric series to infinity? I'll just quickly remind you over here, the sum is always the initial term, or a, divided by 1 minus r. So in this example, a is just 1. And then 1 minus r, the r value, in this case the ratio is equal to x. So we have this. It's just equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x. So this fact I want you to memorize. That the power series of 1 plus x plus x squared all the way, all the way to the end, to infinity, is just equal to 1 over 1 minus x. And this is true when the x value is less than 1. Okay? Now, that means this function f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x can be written as a power series. And this over here that I'm going to highlight in blue is just a shorthand way of writing out all of these terms here. Okay? So the things that I've highlighted here all go hand in hand. So this power series equaling this function, 1, minus, 1 over 1 minus x, which also can be written as a sum of n equals 0 to infinity of x to the power n. And it's also true when x is less than 1. All, I guess, four of these things go hand in hand. And I'd like you to memorize this, because this is going to be the foundation and basis of what we're going to do today. So, what I'd like to do in the next example is I want you to find the power series for each of the following functions. So notice the function f of x is related to this f of x. And I want you to see if you can see the difference between the two and the similarities. And then from there, we should be able to reproduce the things that we want. For example, the four terms of the general term, and the general term, sorry, using the sigma notation, and then this interval of convergence. So just back up to here. You see what I did in this example here, this thing? This is also what we call our interval, write this down, of convergence. Sometimes they call it the IOC. It's the interval for which the power series actually holds. So, looking at this now, I will ask you, in example number one, to compare. So, look at this and look at that. What is different? I hope you can see the only difference is this is minus x, this is plus x. And that's the ratio part. So, notice I can say this is a geometric series. Okay. The a value, the starting value, is still 1, but the common ratio now has changed. Instead of it being x, this time it's negative x. Right? Can you see that? If I rewrite this as 1 over 1 minus negative x, let's see, that format, so x became negative x. So, if that's the case, if I actually write out the first four terms, 
I know, it's going to be right it as the following. 1 plus, using this now, instead of x, it's negative x. Instead of x squared, it's negative x all squared. And instead of x cubed, it's negative x cubed, and so on. So here we go. 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed. And then I guess the general term plus negative x to the power of n plus dot dot dot. You need to have those dot dot dots because that means it goes on forever. And if I wanted to ask you about the sigma notation, that's this now, I can also rewrite it as just the sum of n equals to 0 to infinity of negative x to the power n. But some people like to separate that because the negative can be separated into the following. I should have wrote this a little bit nicer with some more space. Let me try this again. Sorry if you did it already. I'm just going to write it with a little bit more space. I can write this as negative 1 to the power n and also x to the power n. So I just separated the constant out from the variable. Good. And finally, the last thing is your interval of convergence, the IOC. And remember, the interval of convergence is the absolute value of your ratio. So in this case, it's negative x. And that has to be less than 1. Well, the absolute value of negative x is still just x. So this interval of convergence is still the same. The absolute value of it has to be less than 1. Or you can say that x has to be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, that's it. So, I'd like you to try example 2 now. Same idea, just compare that with uh, the thing in purple and look and see if you can spot the differences. I hope you can see that this is also a geometric series. However, this time the a value is 3 and the r value here is 2x right that's the x part from up there f of x of 1 minus x squared so knowing those things we now can rewrite the following let's write out the first four terms as well first term is now 3 So you think about it, I just multiplied everything by 3 here. So I'm going to multiply not just the first term by 3, but the entire actual function. So 1 plus, instead of x, is now 2x. Instead of x squared, it's 2x squared. Instead of x cubed, it's 2x cubed. All the way to, uh, well, yeah, 2x to the power n plus dot, dot, dot. Okay. You can expand this out if you wish. That becomes 3 plus 6x. 2x all squared is what? 4. 4 times 3 is 12x squared, and so on. Okay. Summation notation, or sigma notation. n equals to 0 to infinity. Notice now, it's not just x, but there's a 3 in front. And the x value became 2x, so 2x to the power n. And that's perfectly fine to leave it like that. And then finally, the interval of convergence, IOC. In this case, it's the absolute value of 2x is less than 1. So, of course, I can write this as 2x is between negative 1 and 1. We'll divide both sides by 2. And you'll get here the interval of convergence being x has to be between negative half and positive half. Okay, another one here, example three, same business. So once again, this one, you have to decide how it differs from one over one minus x. And then from there, do the same thing. 
So once again, I'm comparing purple with purple. And you're like, the denominator is nowhere near close to that. And so you have to rewrite this as follows. Try to write it in the same way as the function in purple. So 1 minus something. Well, 1 minus what gives you actually just 3x in the denominator? If you said 1 minus 3x, you are correct. And so knowing that, hopefully you can see that this is now once again a geometric series. The a value is equal to 1. And now the common ratio is actually 1 minus 3x. And so if I ask you to write out the first four terms, this follows now the power series pattern of 1 plus not x, but 1 minus 3x, plus not x squared, but 1 minus 3x all squared, plus not x, but 1 minus 3x all cubed, plus to the dot, 1 minus 3x to the power n, plus dot dot dot. And ultimately, as sigma notation, this becomes n equals to 0 to infinity. And then we have here x being 1 minus 3x to the power of n. And finally, the interval of convergence. We're going to now take 1 minus 3x and make that less than 1. That, of course, means that 1 minus 3x has to be between 1 and negative 1. We will then start doing some algebra. I'll subtract 1 on both sides, negative 2, negative 3x, and 0. And then don't forget we need to now divide by negative 3. And be careful when dividing by negatives, because that means we have to now change the sign. So really, ultimately, I'm saying x has to be between 0 Oops, I made a mistake. This would be two thirds, right? Yeah. So x has to be between zero and two thirds, positive two thirds. And there we have it. So one of the first things you need to do is be able to recognize the power series and the various forms of it. Now, what can we do with these power series? Well, we can create other power series, and we do it three different ways we're going to try to create other power series using substitution. So what I mean by here is, let's look at our power series from example number 1 again. So that's from above, the f of x equals to 1 over 1 plus x. So let me just copy that down right now for us. So f of x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x. And of course, that gave us the power series 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed and so on. Okay, so this is just from example number one, example one. Now, I'm going to ask you now to make a new power series. So, a new one consisting of the following. Instead of having f of x, it's not f of x squared. So now, what I mean is, wherever we see x, replace it with x squared. This is like the chapter on function notation in pre-calc 12. So, wherever you see x, replace it with x squared. Wherever we see x, replace it with x squared. So x squared squared is x to the power 4. This would be then x to the power 6. And so on and so on. And there you have it. Your new power series in terms of f of x squared. So, you try number 5. And this one takes the g series from number 2. Or example 2. So let me just copy that again. g of x equals to 3 plus 6x plus 12x squared, plus 24x cubed. And then this time, your goal is to find a new series replacing x with root x. So go try that yourself. And double check with me afterwards. Pretty straightforward? Cool. So that's creating a power series using substitution. Turn the page. We can also create power series by differentiation. Yes, by taking derivatives. 
So now, once again, I'm going to ask you to use the power series for f of x being 1 over 1 minus x. And using that from the previous page, I believe that was the first one we did right at the top. I want you to write a power series sorry, for its derivative. So once again, from before, I know that f of x, which equals to 1 over 1 minus x, is equivalent to 1 plus x plus x squared plus and so on. If I ask you now to find the derivative, yes, I know you can take the derivative here, but let's just take the derivative of the power series portion, and the derivative of 1 would be then 0, the derivative of x would be then 1, the derivative of x squared is 2x, and of course the next one's x cubed, so it's 3x squared, and so on and so on and so on. And so once again, you've just created another power series to represent a derivative. And how is this really nice? Well, derivatives of powers are so much easier than you taking the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x. Although I know you can still do it. Okay, how about number 7? Number 7 is a really neat one that I really enjoy doing. You're like, ew, I hate those factorials. I know, but that's okay, we can do this. Once again, I'm going to ask you to take the derivative, so j prime. So, let's do this. The derivative of 1 is, good, 0. The derivative of x is, 1, good. How about this part? The derivative of x squared, that's the same thing as 2x. And 2 factorial is just 2. So this is the same thing as 2x over 2. Okay. Next one here. This is the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. And that's dividing by 3 factorial. I'm going to write this as 3 times 2 times 1. Okay. Uh, 4 x to the power of 4 is 4x cubed, right? Oh, we take the derivative. And this is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if you keep going, the derivative of x to the power of n is just n, x, n minus 1, all over n times n minus 1, and all that forever and ever and ever. Now, let's see if we can simplify. This just becomes 1. 2x over 2 becomes x. Notice here the threes cancel out, so I just get x squared over 2 times 1, or that's the same thing as 2 factorial. Notice here the fours cancel out, that's, that's the same thing as x cubed over 3 times 2 times 1, or 3 factorial. See a pattern here? This would be x to the power n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial. If you said, hey, the derivative is exactly the same as the original function, I'd say, uh-huh, that's why it's so cool. So, which function has its derivative being the same? So I'll say since j prime of x equals to j of x, what function has its derivative being the same? You can say that therefore, can you all say this together? j to the x must represent the function e to the power of x. Because the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Hmm. Okay, now we've done differentiation, we've done substitution. It's time to do the hardest one, probably, finding power series by integration. So let's go back to example number one again. Okay, that's the function 1 over 1 plus t. And that was given by 1 minus t plus t squared minus t cubed, and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to ask you to actually integrate and integrate from 0 to x. So, we can do this by integrating both sides. Let's do the left side first. The antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus t. Yes, that's just natural log of 1 plus t. I'm going to put this in the absolute value just in case. We're going to now evaluate this from t equals to 0 to t equals to x. That's the left side. The right side, since it's a power series, we're just going to anti-differentiate or integrate every single term. Separately, the antiderivative of 1 is just t. This is would be t squared over 2. t squared becomes t cubed over 3. Minus t 4 over 4. Plus dot 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 dot. Right? And so then I'm going to ask you to evaluate this from t equals to <coughs> 0 
to t equals to x. And let's see what we have in store. Going back to the left side and plugging in x, so there's natural log of bracket, or sorry, absolute value of 1 plus x minus the natural log of, I guess that's just 1. And if I plug in x, this becomes x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x4 over 4 plus da 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 da. And of course, that's minus 0 as well. So we can simplify this. Natural log of 1 is just 0, so therefore, all I have here is. The natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x is equal to the lovely power series x minus x squared over 2 plus x squared over 3 minus x squared over 4 plus dot 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 dot. Okay, and there's one last thing we should make a note of, and that's the interval of convergence. Remember, this is only true from example number 1 if x is between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so I can write all of this together. This is true for all the x values between negative 1 and 1. Cool. Notice I have a lawn of 1 plus x power series. Number 9 says, can you use the result that I just highlighted in green and write a power series for the function natural log of x? Well, the question then I have for you is how does this and this compare? Can you write natural log of x in that sort of format? And I'll say, I hope you can, because I know I can, like this. This is the same thing as 1 plus x minus 1. So notice I still have this 1 plus, and notice how I've now the x value just became x minus 1. So therefore, in my power series now, wherever I see x, I just replace it with x minus 1. More substitution. And there you have it. Okay. And how about the power series for now g of x, which is x squared times natural log of x. Well, I now know what natural log of x is. That's just from number 9. So I'm just going to take whatever I got from number 9 and multiply every single term by x squared. So this becomes now x squared times x minus 1 minus x squared times x minus 1 squared over 2 plus x squared times x minus 1 over 3 or power 3 over 3 minus x squared times x minus 1 to the power 4 all over 4 and so on. Get the idea? Alright, this stuff kinda weird, so you need to do some practice. So get ready to do some practice, please.